Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today to continue our series of lessons on how to be a successful engineer. Now I'm getting ready to go into the series about how to write a resume, how to interview for a job, how to make a good impression, how to go out and get that job that you really want. But based on some questions that I've been getting from people, it seems like we need to pause and talk a little bit about first of all deciding what you want to do because you can't go out and get that job you really want if you don't know yet about what you want. And a lot of times you're sort of going through the education process and you really don't know what's out there in the world. So if you haven't watched it yet, make sure that you go back and watch the last video because the first thing that you've got to decide is for your personality type, the pers type of person you are, are you better off working for a big company or a small company? You really got to decide that first. Go back and watch the, the last video. Then once you decide if you're more of a big company type person or a small company type person, you got to decide what type of job you want. And it doesn't really matter what field of engineering you're in. The jobs usually break up into three very, very broad categories. And then we can kind of subdivide those three broad ones. But for today, we need to decide whether you're more suited for research, whether you're more suited for development, or you're more suited for application. Because almost anything goes through the sequence of research to development to application. In fact, in industry, it's called RDA. And for you to be happy with your job, you've got to make sure that you pick a job that is well suited for your personality, for the way you like to do things, okay? And so let's just start on R and A, okay, because they're on sort of opposite ends of the spectrum. If you are primarily a creative person that wants to think about things upside down, that wants to work backwards, that wants to really shake things up and, and kind of start with a blank sheet of paper and just, just kind of go all over the place, if, if you're primarily describing yourself as a creative person, then probably the research arena is where you would find yourself the most happy. On the other hand, I would say kind of the opposite of creative, and I'm not, I mean, don't get mad at me and stuff, but I'm just saying in broad terms here, I know this isn't always the case, but sort of the opposite of creative is very structured, okay? If you like things very, very structured, if you want everything in its place, if you want to come to work in everything very structured about what has to be done, how it should be done, where everything needs to go, everything very, very structured, you're probably going to be happier in application, uh, the application end of things. And if you're somewhere in the middle, then probably the development development is where you're going to be the happiest. And so again, just real briefly, research is exploring any type of new idea. You're out there, you know, it would be quantum computing or it would be really crazy artificial intelligence or, or uh, you know, really, really far out there in virtual reality. You know, just, just all of these kind of kind of crazy emerging ideas that you're playing around with. <clears throat> you could think of a research job as sort of being a sandbox. You know, you don't give kids much instruction when you put them in the sandbox. They've got some toys to play with. They got a shovel. They got a scoop. They got a bunch of sand, and they just let their imagination run wild and go crazy. On the other, on the other hand, uh, development is. You look at all these ideas that you're doing research on. You're researching all of these crazy things. This one shows promise, and we want to take it from this conceptual stage where people have maybe done some simple experiments or shown some very uh, simple types of things, and now you want to you want to push it forward, push it towards being a product. Now you're not making a product, but you're going from sort of a a bench top top proof of concept that looks promising to something that might be a prototype that you could hold in your hand, that you could hand someone that would a little bit act like a, you know, start acting like something that really is deployable or does something. So, so that's what the development guys do. They take the initial research concept where it's just a, just a, a sort of bench top demonstration or an experiment or, you know, kind of something like that and take it to something that you could hold in your hand and say, here, you know, on off switch, turn it on, it does something. All right. Now that's a prototype. Okay. The development guys would be getting sort of a prototype or an advanced prototype that kind of starts looking like something that might 
have features of a product. Well, what do the application guys do? They go in and they take that, that prototype, they take that thing that was done in development and they turn it into a product. And I would describe it almost like each one of these kind of like a 10, 10, and 10. So, so let's say that your research group might be working on a hundred different research ideas all over the place, hundred different ideas. Okay. Out of those hundred things that your research guys are doing, they're going to pick the 10 most pro or the, the organization is going to pick the 10 most promising ones and that's going to be moved into development. And then the development group isn't going to be working on a hundred things. It's going to be working on 10 things. And there you're focusing. You're focusing on getting something to more of a deployable stage. Okay. Then of those 10 things that you bring to prototype, something with an on off switch that you can walk around with and do something useful with out of those 10 things, then the, the application group is going to, is going to pick one of them to turn into a real product. And so you kind of, from a hundred ideas, there's going to be 10 of them that go into development. And of the 10 things that go into development, one of them is actually going to go into application or deployment or development of a, of a product. And the cultures and the work environment are radically different in these three different things. So when you're picking a job, you got to say, am I more research oriented? Am I more development oriented? Am I more application oriented? Okay, so let's talk about research. Research is playing in a sandbox, like a bunch of kids are thrown in a sandbox, able to work on a lot of different things. So when you are in research, there is great flexibility. Okay, great flexibility. You can try lots of different stuff. Very few constraints put on you. There is an ability to express your creativity. If you have a crazy idea of doing things in a completely new way, you want to be in the in the research group. Okay. Now understand though that there's some downsides of the research group. One downside is you're going to have less resources. Okay. That guy in application He's got an integrated circuit coming out. It's got to be tested, man. He just snaps his finger. He gets a million dollar piece of test equipment because you got to get the product out. You over here in research, you need $5,000 to get this little, uh, this little gizmo so you can demonstrate stuff. And it might be hard to get that. You see, so the resources are very, very hard to get in research and much more competitive and much smaller. And so you're, you're going to have to do a lot more bootstrapping. You're going to have to be a lot more creative and, oh, well, I'm going to borrow or I'm going to reconfigure or I'm going to do this because you're just not going to have the resources that you would in the, uh, in the other organizations. Also, in research, things are a lot more subjective. And so like things like how they do your performance evaluation, uh, it's going to be kind of subjective and kind of soft. And so like who's going to be the biggest raise in the research organization? It's kind of mushy on that. Well, like who did the best research? Well, what does that mean? Oh, this guy got invited to Hawaii and gave a paper at the whatever keynote speech. Oh, that made the company look good. Or, oh, this person got a patent. Oh, this person got the, the Inventor of the Year Award. You see, all those are kind of mushy things to where in <clears throat> uh, an application organization, man, the guy that gets the product out of the door, the guy that solved that critical problem that was keeping the pro product from going out the door, boom, he's going to get the big raise. It's a lot more quantitative. So, so things are, are you're going to have less resources and the performance uh, uh, metrics that you're evaluated on are going to be a lot more mushy. Okay, in a research organization, things are a lot more political, and so it's not so much fact-based, technical-based. Uh, who gets the resources and who gets the raises and where things go tend to be a lot more political, and therefore, uh, you know, for some people that could be uh, quite, uh, quite uh, frustrating. So again, in research, it's kind of like children playing in the sandbox, and you've got a few adults. Well, who gets which toy? and who gets the bigger sandbox and how much sand is in your sandbox and who's playing in your sandbox versus who's playing in the other sandbox. You know, it, it's, it's like some people love that environment, some people it's very frustrating. Okay, that's research. Next up is development. Well, in development, there's gonna be more structure 
okay there's going to be more structure but there's still flexibility you have a chance to uh, you know you have a chance to sort of define things and and there's still an opportunity to express creativity but at least you kind of agree where you're going so in research the job is we're all playing in the sandbox a lot of flexibility to start a lot of things try a lot of things do a lot of things okay in development at least you're sort of agreeing on what you're doing let's say in development instead of playing on the sandbox we're going to make a quadcopter and the quadcopter is going to be uh, targeted towards uh, real estate agents so someone who's not technically adept they just open the box they hit a button and boom the uh, you know the the thing is going to take pictures of the property for them so so drone development okay that's still development because you haven't decided it's going to be a product but of those hundred things that the research guys were thinking about one of them that you're going to do is a uh, is a drone well all of a sudden there's more expectations on you we need a drone demonstration we need a prototype that we could show someone so we're going to have to have a box the box is going to open the drone's going to come out it's going to have an on off switch and then it needs to do this this and this to be interested interesting to uh, uh to real estate agents now you're not working out all the production problems you're not sharpening your pencil on every single little thing you're just getting something that you could take around to real estate agents and say hey would this be something that you would be interested in so development is taking things from a concept to something that looks real that you could actually show someone that is actually doing now you're you're, you're going to make 10 or 15 of them you're not going to make 10 million of them so it's getting things to the maturity that you could make five or ten or or 50 demonstrations okay that would be development uh, it's it's really this is is great for more motivated it's it's kind of like this is good for people who are motivated and creative because you take that idea and you turn it into something real but there's still flexibility right you're not coming in and saying you have to follow this standard operating procedure and you will do this you will do this you will do this there's still a lot of flexibility okay so so to me I mean personally I love to be in development because there was a realness to it that I knew that if I could really make this thing work there was a good chance that it would become a product so there was a realness to it but then I'm a really creative person so I oops uh, no harm done I really like to be able to, uh, to express my creativity on the job so so I really like to be in development taking something from an initial idea into something that starts looking uh, looking uh, good you know looking uh, real so it's great for motivated people it's also more tangible that what the expectation is is a lot more tangible it's not enough to just have a research paper it's not enough just to get a patent it's not enough to just get an award you've got to have something that works works that impresses people so I found that uh, really great also because you're trying to push things to a demonstration you're going to have more resources than you would in the research area but you're going to have less flexibility because remember we're making a quadcopter you don't get three-fourths of the way to making a quadcopter and decide that you want to make a 3d printer right you're kind of you kind of got some boundaries put on you that you can run in and I really like that okay application is where you actually take that prototype let's say we get to the point and we've made 50 drones and the real estate agents love them everybody wants one you got to turn this into a product now you got to start thinking about things like how do you manufacture it how do you drive cost out of the manufacturing how do you get things so that you don't have to have highly trained people doing the putting them together but lower trained people how do you get things out of the lab and onto the factory floor and so application uh, tends to be much more constrained and much less flexibility and much more structured okay it also tends to be higher pressure because for you to stay in business as a company you have to be selling something and to sell something you have to have a product and to have a product you have to get something through the application the R to D all the way through a and so there's a lot of pressure on people in the uh, application area but because of this their jobs tend to be higher visibility because if you've got to get this product out by the end of the month and you have a problem man the president of the company is going to be in there asking what's going on where are we and if Joe all of a sudden has the breakthrough Joe is on the radar screen so a lot of times there's a great opportunity for career development 
for the people that are willing to work in these application areas. You know, for you to be the, you know, move up the corporate ladder, I think a lot of times there can be more opportunities in most companies in application than in, uh, than in uh, research. It's an opportunity, if you're a high impact guy and you want to have impact, if you're a problem solver, man, uh, you can really leverage that in the application area because again, you know, the company is puckered up to get this product out and if you're the guy that can bring home the bacon, if you're the guy that can solve the problem, if you're the guy that can figure out what's going on, you're going to be wrecked recognized and highly rewarded and highly uh, appreciated. Have to understand though in the application area there is much much less flexibility. You're doing things a lot of times by standard operating procedures. You're doing them in a very structured way in the way that the company wants you to do them. And so if you are very very creative a lot of times in the application area you might find it too structured. You might find yourself a little bit frustrated. You might should go back to D or go to A. And and finally, I think that there's really more, more stress in the application area because the deadlines are real, right? The deadlines are real that we have committed to a customer to have him something. So in development, there's pressure, but if things don't work, it's usually more inside the company. In application, the failures become much more external, much more visible. And so I think overall, in the application area, there's less flexibility and there's more stressful situation. But there's also more opportunity for, uh, you know, big raises, big promotions, you know, big reward, I think can a lot of times come in the application area. So first thing, you got to decide are you more of a big company or a small company type of guy what you got to decide next is you got to decide are you more of an R or more of a D or more of an A and you being happy in your career is going to really pick it's going to be really based more than anything else on picking that job that matches what type of person you are I'd love to hear your comments does this make sense what I'm saying below have you had experience with this how do you see yourself do you see yourself more on the R or more on the A or more in the the middle. I'd really love to hear your comments down below. Hope this has been helpful. We're going to get back now and start uh, working on our series. We're going to get back and ne next up we'll be talking about how to write a resume, how to interview for a job and those things. Again, this is Paul McWhorter, toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.